right now. So happy to have you here with us, man. How are you feeling today? Man, I'm doing well, my brother. How are you? I'm blessed, man. I can't complain. We've been um, doing this Next Generation radio broadcast, and uh, right now we're coming up on the third month of it, and this is actually the first interview right now. And um, we know you won oh, Sunday's man. best. Yes, sir. We know you won Sunday's best. Um, we were blessed by that, um, really blessed by a lot of your music, blessed by your ministry, and just blessed on the way that you continue to carry um, the gospel in your music is heavy on lifting up the name of Jesus, man. So I just commend you and uh, encourage you to keep on going, keep on going and stay stay in your lane, stay truthful to your lane. So um, just a little Thank curious, you, man. Know, know a little bit more about your backstory uh, before Sunday's best and about the age that you came into the church and gave your life to Christ. Tell the well, people how yes, everything is in spotlight. Yeah, man. Uh, well, uh, you know, brother, so really, I I grew up in the church. Uh, my dad has uh, been a pastor literally all of my life. Uh, my mom, a, a, a church musician, choir director, minister of music. And so for me and my siblings, man, church was not an option, uh, you know. Um, and so um, I really grew up in that, in music, in, you know, ministry. Um, but really, bro, I would say, when I was maybe six or seven years old is when, you know, I kind of took that walk, uh, you know, down the aisle to the altar, um, you know, just to say that I wanted to, you know, be a part of the family of God. I wanted to um, be a follower of Jesus Christ, man. And, you know, of course, at that age, you don't understand nearly everything. Um, you know, you mm-hmm. don't know what that all um, entails. But, man, I, 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 I truly believe that from a young age and even earlier than that point, man, God had already was already working in me um, to instill in me a love for him, um, a uh, love for scripture, um, a love just for the things of God. You know, man, you have uh, some PKs who, you know, literally don't want nothing to do with church, you know what I'm saying, and they just wilding out and everything, man. I think I was um, on the other side of that where, you know, I absolutely love church. You know, I love being around church love being around God's people. I love the music of the church. But, man, when I was 11 or 12 years old, uh, something in my life really began to shift because, well, no, actually I was 10 or 11, um, and mm-hmm. I entered into a four-year struggle with suicide. And literally every day uh, just about I was tormented with thoughts of taking, um, uh, taking my own life, man. There were times I was – scared to be home by myself of, you know, what I might do to myself. Um, and it was really spiritual by nature, you know. Um, and so um, I understood even at that age that this was spiritual warfare. Um, but man, I was scared. I was, uh, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was traumatized. Um, but really, man, to be honest with you, it was during that dark season, man, in my life where Jesus really be really, drew me ever closer to himself, man. I remember sometimes coming home from school and I would, you know, uh, eat a bowl of cereal, man. I love cereal, so I would get some cereal. And then I would go upstairs, man, um, and I would just spend time in prayer. I would spend time in the Word. I remember seeking God in, in, in that time because his presence was my safe place. And so, you know, even though I gave my life to him, you know, when I would say six or seven years old, it was really, man, during that, that – uh, that um, adolescent phase, bro, where I think my relationship with God really deepened. And it was at that point that I actually made a rededication and I said, Jesus, whatever you want, I want to serve you for the rest of my life. Man, and that's that's so key. You know, you identify key things. You know, um, suicide is a huge thing right now with the youth from bullying, yeah. to broken homes, and all that stuff. stuff. But you I also identified the key point, which is spiritual warfare. And, and you know, we as artists, we as uh, personalities that are doing things in the kingdom, we have to know, you know, that when we accept the call to Jesus and we accept um, what he's doing and we go forth in it, we have an enemy that's out there to fight. Yes. It's very real. But today I'm, I'm glad, you know, that we're hearing your testimony and not hearing about the, um, your death. So, I wow, commend you for wow. that. We give all the glory to God, and we know that we have the victory through all of the warfare that comes, man. So 
That's yes, such sir. an awesome story. Uh, and I just want you to kind of tell me a little bit uh, for some of the fans out there. I know a lot of people do know you, but some may not know you. Definitely a young artist. We know that the gospel industry is twitching um, a little bit, and some of those that have been doing things for decades on decades have gone home. Um, you know, yeah. some are older, um, but we definitely see that you've been on the scene for seven years. Um, where, where did recording start for you, and um, how was that process of getting started uh, recording? You know, how did how did Sunday's Best come along? And then yeah. um, also some people, how did you go about selecting a record label? Wow, wow. Yeah. Man, thank you, uh, thank you, bro, um, for those questions. And so, really, man, for me, my uh, recording experience uh, really started, bro, um, I don't even know if I could say what the year was. I know I was probably in high school. Um, one of my older brothers, uh, who's now the uh, the uh, current director of the Howard University Gospel Choir, um, mm-hmm. he uh, had, had a, a group back home in Cleveland where we're from, called Fresh Encounter, and man, we didn't know hardly nothing about nothing. We knew that we loved God. Uh, you know, um, we wanted to uh, make music. We were uh, writing these songs, and so we actually did a, uh, a recording, and, uh, you know, we were listening, man, back to the playback from what we did in that studio session. It was like, oh, yeah, okay, like, <laughs> you know, uh, this may just be for us, you know what I'm saying? This may not be for mm-hmm. us to put out. And literally, that was the first thing we did. We ended up doing something else a few years later um, that we did uh, do like a um, soft release for uh, for the uh, city of Cleveland. Um, but even that was not really that high quality. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I but I mean, we were just, you know, we were just um, getting our feet wet. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, seeing what we could do. But literally, man, it was 2013, and I auditioned for BET Sunday Best. I did not make it through the preliminary audition rounds. Um, and then my oldest brother, who's who's my uh, 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 MD, and, um, and 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 the three of us, we all uh, uh, produce records together and things uh, of that nature now. But anyway, he said, you know what, we got to go ahead and start getting some music out, you know, for uh, my own personal ministry, you know, for because, you know, everything else I had done to that point was for the group. So my oldest brother was saying, hey, man, now's the time, you know, for you to, you know, um, uh, get your own stuff out there. And so there's a song that I written called Greater in 2012 that was really talking about how God is doing a new thing and, you know, just all of that based off of Isaiah 43 where it says, God says, you know, behold, I do a new thing. Will you not perceive it? You know, will you not know it? I'm making, you know, rivers in the desert, ways in the wilderness, et cetera. And so um, I, I got rejected from Sunday Best. I didn't make it through the preliminaries on Sunday Best. But several months later, we uh, recorded this song, Greater, and little did I know that recording this song, I was actually going to be prophesying into my own life. We uh, released the song December 2013, and I have to tell this story, man. January 2014 comes around, and um, we're doing an event back home in Cleveland. It's called Cleveland Worship Weekend. We hosted it uh, at our church. And I'm singing that song that I just released a month before, a song called Greater. And and the host for that night, she says, right after I finish the song, she says, you know, God says you experienced some disappointments last year. But 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 he says this is the year that the phone will ring. He says you yeah. are going to bear fruit. You know, you experienced some disappointments last year, but this is the year. And literally, I'm not thinking – Oh, God is telling me he's going to, you know, put me on Sunday best and he's going to cause me to win the whole thing. I'm not thinking at the time, but literally I go back to the audition. Now it's probably February or March 2014, and I go back for the audition. Now, mind you, again, that song I released, it was called Greater. It was talking about how God is doing a new thing, you know, new levels, new seasons. You know, you have to receive it. You have to walk in it, all of that. And so literally um, I go back to the audition This time I make it through the preliminaries, I get in front of the main judges, and I'm as nervous as I've ever been, um, and I hear them tell me yes. And now I'm waiting to see whether or not I'm going to make it onto the top 20 because um, there's a lot of people who the judges said yes to, but who people never saw on the top 20 because they will actually, you know, say yes to um, any 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 voices that they you know really like, but then they have to pare that number down 
two twenty for the uh for the um T V tapings. And so I'm waiting a few weeks to see whether or not I'm gonna make it onto the top twenty. And I'm telling you, brother, I'm singing that very same song on campus at Morehouse College on April seventeenth, twenty fourteen. And right after mm-hmm. I sing that song, so just like in January Right after I sang it, I got the prophetic word. Well, this time, right after I sang it, I got the fulfillment of the prophetic word. I'm getting a call from the BET Network saying, you made it onto the top 20 of Sunday Best. And so literally, man, it was this journey of just doing what we felt called to do, even when we didn't know what we were doing, doing our very best, and then getting to the point where it says, even if a platform that I may have desired said, no, my purpose is greater than any platform. And so therefore I'm just going to do it myself if I have to. And so honestly, man, uh, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. even, even now, you know, uh, uh, seven years Mm -hmm. later, it was, uh, um, you know, because I won Sunday best, I was signed with, uh, uh, with, uh, Kirk Franklin's label for your soul recordings. And man, we just learned so much, man, being with them, you know, sitting under Kirk. I mean, shouts out to him, shouts out to his whole team, uh, just awesome, awesome, beautiful people. Uh, but, but man, we, we got to a point, I think, in 2016 where we ended up parting ways from, 